the 49ers who trailed at halftime and then dominated in the third quarter and held on to beat the Cowboys 30-24 to in the game that wrapped up the last game on Sunday. The Niners, uh, pathetic 4-4 four and four on the year. They were in the Super Bowl last year, kind of embarrassing. And they go into their bye week. The Cowboys, also embarrassing. They always do well in the regular season. They're kryptonite to the playoffs. But Dallas now 3-4 and four on the year, and they – End up losing coming off the bye week. Mike McCarthy, we had the stat at the end of last week. Mike McCarthy, the top record in the NFL against the spread after the bye. It did not work. So let us discuss the question. Dallas had the lead at halftime in this game. They were they were ahead. It wasn't a big lead, but they were ahead. So where does the blame lie for Mike McCarthy's Cowboys? I've got tainted David Copperfield and high crimes and misdemeanors. And we will combine all of these things together, and we are going to have a tailgate party is what we're going to have. So, A, now, uh, th- the first thought I have, uh, the halftime snack. Now, I don't know what they did at halftime there in the visiting locker room in uh, the 49ers facility there, but Mike McCarthy's team was up 10-6 to 6 at halftime. The 49ers had fudged around. They had blown several opportunities and so Dallas goes in the locker room. They've got the lead, right? And it's surprisingly doing okay. A lot of it's assisted by the 49ers, but still. So nothing's changed more in my lifetime, as we used to say back on the old Blitz show I did with Looney, than halftime adjustment. So X's and O's, they go in there. They change their jersey. Maybe they put some water on their face. They have some orange slices, some Gatorade. And uh, clearly, those those little orange slices in the Gatorade were tainted. They were tainted with tranquilizers. The way that the Cowboys came out, Dallas played like they were preschoolers, and it was nap time in the third quarter. So, ah, the halftime's not long enough, so let's go out. Let's take a nap in the third quarter. And for 15 minutes, they stood there, flat-footed, and gave up 21 points, outscored 21 to nothing in the third quarter by the 49ers, and then it was garbage time in the fourth quarter. Even though the Cowboys got back within one score, you never got the vibe they were actually going to finish, even with all the choke jobs the Niners have done under Shanahan. Overall, San Francisco, with only six points at halftime, they ended up with 469 yards of offense, converted 50% of their third downs and 75% of their trips to the red zone. Now, turn the page on that. How do you grade Dakota Prescott and his performance here, another loss for the Cowboys who are under 500, and Dak Prescott got paid that forever money before the season, and Dak continues to suffer from chronic blunders. Uh, And this game, it was the majority of the game. And the more I watch Dak Prescott play quarterback, and we've called him – Dink, Dak, you know, uh, Dink and Dunk Dak, we've called him over the years, right? He masters the short pass and all that. But this game, and it's really been this way most of this year for the Cowboys, he has mastered the art of camo, camouflage. And when I say camouflage, it's the he, he's like an illusionist. Uh, he's David Copperfield is what he is. In, he enhances his performance in garbage time. A lot of people don't watch these games. They just look at the box score. They'll see the highlights, and they'll say, oh, Dak wasn't that bad. Yeah, look at the numbers. Uh, but let me give you my evidence that he is uh, – Dak Prescott is the David Copperfield of quarterbacks. All right, so in this game, 27 uh, – there was 27 points for the 49ers, 10 for the Cowboys going to uh, the fourth quarter. Uh, it, was, it was a blowout in favor of – the 49ers. They were they were ahead by a wide margin in this game, going to the fourth. So uh, the first three quarters of this game, Dak Prescott was 16 of 23 for 116 yards. He was averaging five yards per pass for the first three quarters of the game. He had no touchdowns and two interceptions and a passer rating of uh, 44.8, which I didn't play in the NFL, but I don't think that's good. So then Dak turns into stat bandito. He says abracadabra, hocus pocus, and pow, just like that. So in the fourth quarter, the game's all but over. Uh, Niners in their history have only blown 17-point leads twice in their entire history. So they're, they're up big. And then in the fourth quarter, Dak's like, all right, I'm David Copperfield. 
Here we go. Uh, he throws two touchdowns, no interceptions, averages eight and a half yards per pass in the fourth quarter, has a passer rating of 126.9 to enhance his numbers, right? To enhance his numbers and all that, to enhance the stat sheet. And, uh, you know, got, got some help. Got some help from some 49er defensive players that ran into each other, like the Keystone Cops there. But he had an 8.3 passer rating in the th- in the third uh, period. Uh, 8.3, which I didn't even know was possible to have an 8.3, but he did. All right, last word. We now go to Landover, Maryland. We leave the Sunday night game to the moment. Not the game, because the game wasn't that good, but the moment. And one of the all-time bad beats in the history of Benny versus the Penny, I had the Chicago Bears minus two. Bears are trailing the entire day. They score a late touchdown, but they're only up by one. They have to go for the two-point conversion. So if they get the two-point conversion, they're up by three. I'm up by one, and there's less than, less than 30 seconds to go in the game. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to win bet. So they go for two. They get the two-point conversion. So now they're up by three. All right, fine. Game's over. That's it. No! No! Jaden Daniels scrambled around for an eternity. 13 seconds almost. Jaden Daniels zigged and zagged around the field as the Bear defenders futilely attempted to track him down. He then chucks the ball high in the air, a rainbow, and it comes down right, boom, from the 35-yard line of Washington. Chucks it up in the air, no time on the clock, and it ends up being tipped off the hands of Zach Ertz, the Washington tight end on the goal line, into the arms of Noah Brown. What can Brown do for you? Noah Brown standing alone in the end zone. La, 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 la. 52-yard Hail Mary touchdown. The commanders, the improbable, unimaginable. 18-15 win. They didn't even need to kick the extra point there. They win it. And so that's the story everyone's talking about. But it's the story win this story. Now, there were multiple penalties, multiple penalties on the Washington offensive line that the officials chose not to call. And while that sucks, I'm okay with that because you still should not give up a 52-yard Hail Mary pass if you're the Chicago Bears defense and you have any clue of what you're doing. But there's one person in particular who gets to wear the dunce cap, and that is Tyreek Stevenson, who is a nondescript defensive back for the Chicago Bears, who was caught on candid camera before that fateful final play, taunting fans in Landover, Maryland, giving them the business, enjoying the moment, before the play. Even as the ball is snapped, you see Stevenson goofing on some fans in in Maryland there, and then the play goes on. He's taunting the fans. The play's still going on because, well, we, as we talked about, Jaden Daniels was running around for 13 seconds. And so this is going on. You have the, the pet. Now he comes back into the play. He comes over there. Stevenson sashays his way in, and he's in the middle of the play. Now, a moment ago, he's heckling. He's trash talking some dope in the crowd. He's heckling him, and he's the one that tipped the pass. That was caught by Noah Brown. It was off his hand. He was the one. So how should the Chicago Bears handle this? I have unsolicited overnight advice. Here's what I would do if I was the head coach of the Chicago Bears. And I'm Matt Eberflus. Here's what i do. I uh, call a meeting. I say, uh, listen, I, I would like to lambaste you, but I feel like that's not strong enough. Uh, I cannot just lambaste you. Uh, You are no longer in the bubble of trust. I cannot trust you. You're a loser. And since I can't trust you, and since you're a loser, and this rises to high crimes and misdemeanors, as the head coach of the Chicago Bears, I would like to bring down hellfire and damnation. And so I can't do that. I'm not allowed to do that. So instead, I'm going to hand you a nice parting gift, a pink slip. That's what I'm going to hand you. You get the pink slip. See you later. Uh, You're fired. Get out of here. Uh, and that's it. And then I would say, you know what you need to do? You need to go over to expresspros.com because you know, it's free to apply for a new job. You just can't work here. 
and therefore you're done. So uh, update your resume, go over to Express Pros, knock yourself out here. And job seekers never pay a fee at Express, so you're, you're good to go on that. Uh, and I don't care if the guy was a second-round pick, and I don't want to hear, oh, he's really good at all that. No. Apology not accepted. This is a felony. You're done. Go play for some other loser team, okay? Uh, you, you must be jettisoned. You must be abandoned. You're a dope, okay? You're a dope. You were the guy that tipped the ball that cost the Bears the game. You weren't even paying attention when the ball was snapped. You're done. Gonzo, you're the Muppet Gonzo. Get out of here.